Yes, Captain. It's highly illogical. Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 2601. Mike's Daily Podcast. We're having fun at Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley 10, the last place on earth. Did you go to the movies? Did you take that chance that you would breathe the same air? And that'd be fine because nobody wears masks anymore anywhere. But th- that's okay. I was on BART yesterday. I think I was the only one wearing a mask. Mike's Daily Podcast. That's some truly constricted head little places to stand in those Mike's cars. Daily And then in the movies, Podcast. the theaters are slightly... Yeah! I'm not an airflow expert, but it just would seem to me theater the airflow would be a little bit better than inside of the BART car little train car that's tiny and the smell of the marijuana is everywhere I don't know if that's true in theaters now I've not been to a movie theater in so long it may have been 10 years now that's how long it's been but people are going to see Super Mario Brothers movie or Bros dot movie led ticket sales for the fourth straight weekend in the U.S. and Canadian theaters and $40 million as the global haul for the Universal Pictures release surpassed $1 billion according to studio estimates today. The Nintendo video game adaptation dominated the month of April in theaters. Oh yeah, today's the last day of April. Unless you're listening to this in the month of May, then yes, it is the month of May now, or whenever time you're listening. I don't know. It's podcasting. You can listen whenever you want. It could be eons in the future. And Mario Brothers has taken over the world and has run for president and won. Over the weekend, it faced little new competition, so that's going to change. And here's today's podcast picture. Next week. A certain fellow by the name of Chris Pratt is coming back. No, it's not another Jurassic Park movie. Thank goodness. Or Jurassic World. But the podcast picture is of me with a dinosaur. Yes, a T-Rex. Mike, it's Mikey Fikey. T-Rex skeletal recreation that you can find. Oh, the late great Basil the Boxer. He would have loved to have attacked T-Rex. And grabbed some of those juicy bones. That's where I am standing under the skeleton of a T-Rex. And that is over there in Mountain View at the Google campus. They have that. And you can see in the background behind me and T-Rex, there is a volleyball court with sand. Because that's how Google rolls. See that picture at MikeStellyPodcast.com. But yes, next week, it's not the Chris Pratt movie with the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World thing. It's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I know a lot of people looking forward to seeing this, though. I am so off of the Marvel. And the DC, oh, I saw the Flash movie, the premiere for that. Where you see Michael Keaton reprising his role as Batman. That looked exciting until you hear everything about the guy that plays the Flash and all the crazy crime he's committed and how he treats people and women and kids and everybody just horribly. So that's going to be a stigma on that movie release, I think. And DC Warner Brothers are going to have to worry about that. But it's got it's got some bad this nightmare of a show, you know, behind it. So. The Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 kicks off the summer movie calendar and is expected to move Mario Brothers to the side. Studios spent the last week at CinemaCon in Vegas promoting coming upcoming blockbusters and promising big returns at the summer box offices, according to the Associated Press. And second place went to Evil Dead Rise, the horror sequel from Warner Brothers held well in its second week especially for a horror film dipping 50% in its second week with 12.2 million dollars among the weekend's newcomers the Judy Bloom adaptation Are You There God It's Me Margaret it fared the best 
Lionsgate release grossed $6.8 million And it was shown in 3,343 3, locations A decent start For the $30 million budgeted Coming of age tale written and directed By Kelly Freeman Craig Who also did the movie The Edge of Seventeen And a lot of you already know what that Movie is about because you saw the or You read the book when you were younger Possibly I know this is what I'm Hearing from my Lady friends Lionsgate also released the Finnish Action movie Sisu in 1006 locations It's about a Prospector Whose gold is stolen by Nazis It grossed an estimated 3.3 million dollars It managed to surpass The weekend's most heavyweight new release Big George Foreman The miraculous story Of the once and future Heavyweight champion of the world Wow That's the entire That's the entire title And it's from Sony's Christian production company Affirm Films And you would think a faith based Movie Would pull in a lot more folk But it didn't punch very hard With 3 million dollars In 3,054 theaters I love George Foreman My mom loved George Foreman She loved how he named all his sons George And I love the George Foreman grill that I have But not the I only like the one that has the detachable Metal parts That you can wash independently And throw in the dishwasher Even though I don't think you're supposed to But that thing is amazing George Thank you (laughs) That's what we're cooking with here At Cafe Anyway One of the weekend's biggest successes was a familiar box office force, the Walt Disney Company's re-release of Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Yes. A co-worker went to see that with his daughter. I have to tell you, I asked him, is this, um... So it's to commemorate the 1983 film's 40th anniversary... But it is not the original version It is the 97 The 1997 special edition version So it's got all that crazy stupid CGI They pulled that song That Ewok song out As we go outside a cafe anyway Where you bring you Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcast Valleyton, The last place on earth And they put Hayden Christensen in Instead of the original guy That played an older Darth Vader. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Uh, I just hate how George Lucas and Steven Spielberg did that with their films. There's a fantastic South Park episode. Baloney. Where the kids go in a la Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise with wires down into the huge vault where George Lucas and Steven Spielberg hold all their films. And they're trying to steal the films away from them Because they keep redoing them And destroying our childhood destri- Destroying our memories Of how these movies looked They don't look that now Oh, suddenly Han Solo did not shoot first And all these other crazy things That's uh, getting retconned Ugh <laughs> and, and that's how When they redo As you well know when they redo movies now They they completely a, a character you loved From the original movie Gets completely redone they're, they're somehow Nothing like What you thought What you Oh maybe they'll just redo it And they'll keep certain elements Of that original character That I loved oh so much Nope Completely redone For the times The times in which we live you, you see, I'm trying to not say that particular word that rhymes with spoke. But yes, that's what they do. Chris Pratt. He actually, speaking of that movie he's coming out with next weekend. He said that he had a, a fail. He failed his Marvel audition. 
He thought I was never going to audition for Marvel again. Uh, he spoke with Jimmy Kimmel that he and and of course he's going to probably speak to Jimmy Kimmel first because Jimmy Kimmel's show is on ABC and ABC is owned by Disney and there you go. Disney owns Marvel. So he get and I remember they did that special Jimmy Kimmel skit with all the characters. From Avengers Where they were doing A drinking game Or was that Thor That was Thor I think they were doing A drinking game Drinking mead perhaps As they answered questions Quiz questions But Chris Pratt He said that Usually When they They give you a little feedback Oh He did audition for Thor One of the sidekick guys Not for Actual The character The Chris Helmsworth Character He says I didn't get A call back Usually they give you A little bit of feedback And I remember The casting director Goes wow You really made A big choice there Which is code for Hey dial back The acting there guy He shared the failure Got to the point Where I was never Going to audition For Marvel again I was like This is stupid I'm never going to be In a Marvel movie At the time He was auditioning For anything that came out that needed a guy that even remotely looked like me. I would either submit a tape and they would say, no, we don't need to see them. Or I would get there and see them and they'd go, no, that's the last time we need to see you. Luckily, Pratt eventually booked his Guardians of the Galaxy role and the rest is history, but his transformation from NBC's park and recreation guy to Guardians movie star didn't come easily. In men's health in 2018, he said, I probably lost about 35 pounds in six weeks. I ran five or six miles a day. I ate leafy green salads and protein shakes. I cut out alcohol. Trim, trim, trim. And he will wrap his Guardian's role with the upcoming movie. Don't do any emotional preparation. Just go see it and you'll see why people were moved. He advised the audience during Marvel's San Diego Comic-Con panel in June of last year. He said of the final movie, it's an emotional moment for us, certainly as actors who are in the piece watching it for the first time and being reminded of everything we did over the past year, plus making the movie and being out in Hall H in front of these fans for the first time in years and understanding that this is the end of the trilogy. It's all emotional. Wow. So now another late night fella by the name of James Corden, the final episode of which aired last week. He his uh, he is the fourth host for the Late Late Show. An executive told Los Angeles Magazine that the show was simply not sustainable. Oh, the whole show's gone. The whole show's gone. CBS aired its final episode of the Late Late Show after a 28 year run. James Corden not in it all 28 years. I think I can run down in my mind who hosted the show. It originally was Tom Snyder. And then when he left, Craig Kilborn, I might be missing someone. Craig Kilborn, then he left. And I remember there was a big thing between him and the singer Dido. They were flirting back and forth, something big. So he left and they there was a time there was a bunch of different hosts like they're doing now with the Daily Show where they have all these rotating guest hosts. They eventually ended up with Craig Ferguson who was fantastic. Then he left and James Corden came in and he's been doing it ever since and got popular with the carpool karaoke stuff. The last one he did was with Adele. She came back They had originally done A very funny one Very popular Carpool karaoke Where he was harmonizing with her And she's blown away Oh my gosh Listen to that voice And then he had this rivalry With Jennifer Hudson That was hilarious They were trying to one up each other 
The Late Show hosted by James Corden since 2015. Wow. I didn't know it was that long. Cost $60 million to $65 million a year to produce, but only made less than $45 million. All that viral video stuff didn't do anything for it. That's the problem Jimmy Fallon has. He's got all this stuff that goes viral, but it doesn't do much money for NBC when it gets viral. I mean, to you and me, if we had a YouTube video channel, which I do have a YouTube video channel, but it's not really, it's the podcast in video form, which no, it's not me talking into a microphone. Video of that would be just, it would be brain deadly boring. No, it is just a video, like the podcast picture in the video, but it's a podcast picture and the audio I meant. Awesome. But yes, to you and me, if we had a video that got as many views as they did, we'd make so much money, we'd be happy. But to NBC, they don't get, it's eh. $45 million a year, less than that is what they would make. It was simply not sustainable. CBS could not afford him anymore. Oh, CBS, not NBC. Corden announced his exit as host in April. Well, for Jimmy Fallon, he's on NBC. Uh, in April of last year But it was unclear at the time If the late Late show franchise Would continue He has Since he's been on the show Received 12 Emmy nominations And won the award For Outstanding Interactive Program In 2019 He also had A segment called Spill Your Guts In which celebrities had to answer a question truthfully or eat unfamiliar foods (laughs) that they would not like. And it was costly to keep Corden on board. Corden's salary was around $4 million to $5 million when he first signed onto the show in 2015. His pay increased an undisclosed amount in 2019 to ensure... That he stayed on board for another three years So that cost a lot Real quick Remember someone Who got quite popular Oh about 20 years back Named Leanne Rimes I guess she was big in the late 90s She admitted she would have liked to have had kids With Eddie Sabrian In the early days of their relationship Leanne Rimes and Eddie Made major headlines The two got together While each was married To their respective partner Which caused plenty of drama Especially because Eddie's ex Wound up being A real housewife Right? God But what made The situation even worse Is that Eddie Had two young kids When he and his ex Split That same ex said A ton of terrible things About Eddie and Leanne Even threatening to kill Leanne at one point Over the years, fans continued to watch and wait, thinking that Eddie and Leanne, who claimed they didn't regret leaving either of their marriages, would eventually expand their family. That never happened, apparently despite the pair's hopes that it would. This according to TheThings.com and a story written by Lane Vazquez. While Sabrian was with Glanville... Married to uh, his former wife The two had two sons together Despite the way that his marriage ended Eddie was able to secure shared custody With Brandy Glanville And the two apparently stuck to the custody arrangement Even though Brandy's grief and vitriol Was pretty extensive post-split When In 2017 when asked about their custody situation Eddie responded that it's been great Seemingly indicating that he and Glanville's drama Was finally over At that time Leanne and Eddie both spoke about How they enjoyed spending time with the kids And Leanne noted how much of an influence Having the kids in her life Had on her music As for whether she and Eddie Planned to expand their family It doesn't seem like it was ever in the cards Given the way their love story played out Fans might assume that Eddie and Leanne Would have been in a hurry to have children together It turns out that really wasn't a priority And the two uh, they, 
when they first began seeing each other from the divorce proceedings to custody arrangements the blended family had a lot going on but Leanne Rhymes admitted that she and Sabria both cheated on their ex saying I hate that people got hurt and I don't regret the outcome but she and her new husband seemed to realize that their lives had changed in big ways with Leanne admitting that life was busy with the kids and the two had to carefully plan their time away given that they had the kids half the time and their marriage matured quickly but they did skip a step of having biological kids together and she does not have any biological kids Leanne Rhymes that doesn't mean she doesn't want them she expressed that she sometimes got baby fever Understandable since she explained she'd met and married the love of her life. At the time, Rhymes explained, I'm trying to figure out what it is that stirs it. I haven't figured out that yet because every once in a while I'll be like, what is making me want a baby like right now? I haven't figured that out yet, but it hasn't stuck. Even with baby fever, the artist hasn't wasn't adamant about having more kids, noting maybe one day, I mean, I love my stepkids, and I've got plenty on my plate with them, so I'm cool at the moment. So we will see. Leanne Rhymes turned 40 last year. She is touring quite a bit. I know she's doing some big concert at a fair in California. I think the big California fair. So that's what's going on with Leanne Rhymes, if you were wondering. And finally, oh, and real quick, other, one last celebrity story. Ryan Seacrest... Seems to be happy being replaced by Mark Consuelo. (laughs) He wanted to leave the show. He says, I've been watching Kelly and Mark and they're doing great, says Ryan, who's 48. I hope to see them hang, uh, see them and hang out soon in the wild, as Kelly would say. He's been enjoying his break from that show after hosting alongside Ripa, who's 52, for the past six years. It's nice to not have to get on an airplane in 20 minutes to get back. I miss Kelly. I love her so much. He said goodbye to the show about a month ago. A little less than a month ago. I want you all to know it's not lost on me how fortunate I am. Fortunate to have had this seat next to you, Kel, for six years. You're you're incompatible? There's no one like you. Okay. Okay. You're incompatible. I've spent my entire year talking, but today it's hard to put into words how deeply I've appreciated being here and being with you, being invited into your homes every day to try to deliver a smile or a laugh or two. I'm honored to be part of the family. That, according to Yahoo Entertainment, Yana Grebenyuk wrote that story. Excellent. And finally, finally, USA Today mentioning this. Gas leaf blowers and lawnmowers are shockingly bad for the planet. Who knew? Bands are beginning to spread. Thank you. I'm so happy to hear that. I know Gavin Newsom mentioned something about that over a year ago. This is interesting. Wow, this is interesting. Your lawn may be the next climate change battleground. Regulators and clean air advocates are increasingly eyeing the pollution admitted by small gasoline engines. I'm outside a cafe anyway, by the way, and so glad there are no leaf blowers going by. Environmentalists say a commercial gas leaf blower using one of those for an hour produces emissions equal to driving from Denver to Los Angeles. Among cities and states with bans or limits, and these are places that I would like to move to. It says California, but I don't think that's true because I still hear leaf blowers every week. Burlington, Vermont, Washington, D.C., Vancouver, British Columbia. Hmm. While many critics first attack the small engines for the noise they make, experts say these small two-stroke engines release shockingly large amounts of pollution. Two problems that modern 
and increasingly affordable electric powered equipment solves. The absence of noisy leaf blowers is already being felt in Washington. You used to hear them all day everywhere you went and now you don't. Uh, Susan Orleans helped pass the district's toughest in the nation ban on gas powered leaf blowers. California already has taken the big step in banning the engines, which are formerly known as small off-road engines, or SORES, S-O-R-E-S. California's ban phases in next year. Oh, I see. Did you like that song? Thank goodness they've been banned. And prohibits the sale of new small gas engines. People can keep using the ones they already own. Oh, and they can resell used ones. Oh. Well, that doesn't help anything. That annoying neighbor down the street with the loud leaf blower is still going to use it. Washington, D.C. has a much stricter ban. Barring the use of gas-powered leaf blowers by anyone within the district. And that happened beginning January 1 of last year. And... They will levy a $500 fine for violators. Unless they're on federal property. The ban also allows anyone who sees or hears a gas-powered leaf blower to file a complaint. They don't need a city inspector to witness it. Denver area regulators are considering restrictions that primarily target large commercial and municipal users but provide exemptions for homeowners. The Denver area ban is focused on reducing ozone pollution, which causes breathing difficulties and contributes to climate change. So, so loud, destroying our ozone, they smell horrible. The people doing it, they, they, they're not doing any good. They're just blowing leaves around. They never, it, it's people too lazy to use a rake. You're just, you're creating wind that's got that gas smell in it. I can't believe, what the hell is this place anyway? Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. Look who is here right now. Oh, Mike, you're <laughs> such a creative soul. All right. Hello, Mike, I'm Madame Rude, I hate leaf flowers too. Ooh. Are you tired? Yes. Had a long weekend? Yes. Wrong. Did you like that dinosaur picture? No. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> it scared me. Ooh. And you're tired. Yes. Uh-huh. Look who else is here. Hello, Dave Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, that was really fantastic. And that story that you told there about the leaf blowers, that was very eye-opening, D. Yeah, eye-opening. Do you know that? You've got leaf blowers in the little booth here in the parking lot, right? Yeah, we got a bunch of it there. We just turn on the leaf blowers to create all kinds of exhaust and cause smog here in the parking lot with all the cars. They. Ah! Smog in the parking lot. Oh, sorry, Bison Bentley, go ahead. Yeah, smog! Ah, oh, terrible. Well, we need to work on that. That's not environmentally sound or smart let's, let's go, go back, back with, with matthews. matthews look what time it is now for it is time now for let's go back with matthews years and years ago about 20 years ago i was on the radio <gasps> what? in california in the southern california area just north of there ventura county on kehe doing country radio a request show and we would do this fun thing where, like this podcast, we would go to a cafe called the Santa Fe Cafe. And a lot of characters that I created on that show, I do on this podcast. One of them is the Brewmaster. And here is a little clip from early 2002, somewhere in that vicinity. And here is a little bit of the fun early days of the Brewmaster here we go. 
Works on Lone Star. Where you can always commute to work with the music that makes America great. 100.7 KHAY and Lone Star Not a Day goes by Leanne Rhymes' commitment just ahead of that. Wow, Leanne Rhymes, there we go. It all ties back in together because we were talking about Leanne and how she's happy at 40 with no kids. And Matt Michaels, I'm our biological kids. Going into the basement of the K. Hey Santa Fe Cafe, the K. Hey Cafe question. What is the first vehicle you got to drive in honor of that Alan Jackson song, Driver in the Basement, seeing our brewmaster? Hello there, Matt. I have a lady friend here tonight. Uh-huh. Yes, Matthew. I've been trying to woo her. All right. Yes, Matt. Here she is. Hi. She doesn't seem to want to say anything. Buttercup, say something to Matt. Uh, why are you messing with me, pal? Um, I don't know if you two are getting along or not. Buttercup, say some nice thing to Matt. Uh, why are you messing with me, pal? Okay, I think I should probably leave now. What do we have, nurse? Wow, that got steamy. Yes. That would be the brewmaster in early 2000s, early, the early O's, 2002. He was talking to his buttercup. That's uh, we would get calls sometimes. And I think that was an actual call of somebody saying to me, why are you messing with me, bro? <laughs> because they wanted to hear a song. And I think I told her, this is all trying to remember this from 20 years ago. But she wanted to hear a song that we had just played. I go, we just played it. And this happened a lot back in the request days of radio. And she'd be able to play it again. Well, yeah. It, yeah. You know how when people listening to the radio complain that they hear the same song over and over again? That would cause that to be even worse if we did that. So these are things we learn on the segment. Let's go back with Matthews. And here's another 45 one. 45-year-old male vital... Okay, hey, Santa Fe Cafe time, 11.04, or somewhere around 11.20. I'll be getting you qualified for the K-Hey Ride to the Airport contest and getting you a Trick Pony's debut CD. But this is Cindy Thompson. I'm gone. Hey, Michaels. Hi, I'm Cindy Thompson, and I'm sitting with Matt Michaels at his table right next to the stage at the Santa Fe Cafe on 100.7... New Ford ZX2 from Simi Valley Ford could soon be in your driveway, and you could be making plans oh, we were, to see Brooks and Dunn on their Neon Circus and Wild West show in Dallas. We were giving away some tickets to see Brooks and Dunn in Dallas, and so people would call in right about 25 here. 25 right now to 650-K-H-A-Y, dialing Ventura County's number one for summer fun, K-H-A. It's another stupendous K-H-A Santa Fe Cafe regular. What song you want? This Spanish song from Brooks and Dunn. Oh, uh, my heart uh, is lost to you. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that was a song Brooks and Dunn sang in Spanish. Friday. Matt Michaels putting a rap on a Tuesday. Number one on the top eight and eight was When You Lie Next to Me for the second night in a row by Kelly Coffee. Tonight in the KH9 o'clock preview room, new stuff from Dwight Yoakam. It passed 100.7% of the votes saying they liked it. A song called Sitting Pretty. Tomorrow night in the KH9 o'clock preview room, new stuff from Kevin Denny, the guy who's saying that's just Jesse. He's got a new one. We'll hear it. We'll listen to it together. And after that, at the KH Santa Fe Cafe, the KH Cafe question will be, what's the best thing about being a dad? I am not one. However, it will be interesting to hear from people like you that do. We gotta go. I'm just a bit weird, so let's get out of here. It's there in the cafe, I think. After midnight next, 1 800 722 NIT. Next stop, the KHAY studio. Matt Michaels has left the building. I really wouldn't lose. I'm just a sub. Must learn, kids, that there are more things to life than breaking and entering. Hey, I've got a... It's a life and breaking our entry. Where would you be? Kenny Chesney, she's got it all. Just ahead of that, Kenny Chesney winning the big award during the flame-worthy CMT Music Video Awards. Picking up uh, best video for his video for the song Young. The K-Hey Cafe question, what's the best thing about being a dad? Coming up about 11.20. Uh, it must have been around Father's Day. Right and here we are, here close to Mother's contest. Day. And, oh, Fernando... 
Mato, darling. Oh, marvelous. Fernando, Tony Lamas, a lot of people ask me, you know, why does he always say, you look marvelous? I, they don't understand you. That's right, Matthew, darling. But you understand me, don't you? No. No, I don't really. God, I want to tell everybody. You my... ah. I'm sorry. I had to do that, Nando. Hey, how are you? Wow, that was a violent part of that wonderful show called the Santa Fe Cafe. It get, it would get violent sometimes at the Santa Fe Cafe. Okay, one last clip here on Let's Go Back with Matthews. And here's another character you sometimes hear on Mike's Daily Podcast. Uh, we're going to miss her, aren't we? We're just going to keep on fishing, though. It's 100.7 KHAY. I'm Matt Michaels. I'm at the KHAY Santa Fe Cafe. The KHAY Cafe question, what's the best thing about being a dad? And we're going into the gift shop to see our 18-year-old gift shop supervisor, Shelly Shuhart. Matt Michaels, I have this lady on the phone who wants to talk to you. Uh-huh. Yeah, Matt Michaels, here she is. I've never met you, but I hope you soon. Matt Michaels, she said she wants to meet you soon. Really? Yes, Matt Michaels, so how about right now? All righty. Hi, nice to meet you. Matt Michaels, that didn't go well, did it? You should have protected me. What's wrong with you? It's Travis Tritt. Yes, I'll... Wow. It did get violent on that show from time to time. That was Shelly Shuhart, an early, early version of her. Wow. And I also did a classic rock station. I don't know what it means. More than oldies, the bus 96.7 and Jackson Brown with Loadout and Stay. It looked like the CD was going to load out right there, but it, it, it behaved for us for the uh, second half of the song, Stay. Thank you, CD player. This is in the 90s when we were using CDs. This is about 93 to 92, 3, somewhere in there. And that is a CD player. And they would skip like crazy because people didn't know how to take CDs in and out, take them and put them in the case. Remember how difficult that was? There was a correct way where you would open up the lid to the CD. You would, with one hand, hold it. And the other hand, you would take your finger and press the middle of the CD. That plastic thing that held the CD in place. You would press that and then move your fingers with the same finger, the hand that was pressing that. This was the fancy way you were supposed to do it. Most people just grabbed it and ripped it out. And that would cause all kinds of scratches on the CD. And thusly, we would have CDs that would skip on the air. But I learned from a musician friend that you do the thing with one hand where I think your pointing finger, you press down in the middle of the CD. And then with the two fingers on either side, you would grab the edges of the CD ever so gently and carefully as to not put smudges on the CD. Pull it out gently and then put it in the CD player. Well, nobody did that. They just grab it, throw it in there. And that's why it was difficult being a DJ in the 90s. You're very nice. Mike Matthews here on a Saturday afternoon talking to inanimate objects. Coming up at 335, we are going to bring you the pet of the week from the Ventura County Humane Society. The Wharf in Ventura is offering an eight-pound bag of Iams dog food or cat food if someone adopts a pet from the Humane Society and mentions the bus 96.7. <laughs> Fleetwood Mac. I love that song. The song Hold Me by Fleetwood Mac is very difficult to explain to other people. Like Fleetwood Mac songs, you can say, oh, you know that song Landslide? Landslide brought it down. You can, and they go, oh, yeah, I know that song. Or uh, you can go your own way. Oh, yeah, go your own way. Great song. But that one, Hold Me, you can't really do the chorus by yourself. Hold me. Hold me, hold me. They're like, what What are you doing? It makes no sense. You need the three people. Lindsey Buckingham, the late Christine McVie, and Stevie Nicks all singing together on that. And that's my little opinion with that. Downset hike. 
tomorrow afternoon. The Bus 96.7 is going to be at the Holiday Inn Breakers Lounge in Ventura. Join us. We're going to have lots of fun as Philadelphia Eagles take on New Orleans Saints. Isley Brothers. Oh, I did not hit the post. I hit the post and then smashed into it and tore out the dang post. Sorry about that, Isley Brothers. Got the hell on me. More than oldies, the best 96.7. Mike Matthews with you on a Saturday afternoon, 410 right now. Want to remind you, we are going to be at the Holiday Inn tomorrow in Ventura for the first postseason football parties. Begins at 1 o'clock, the Breakers Lounge inside the Holiday Inn. We'll see you there with the bus 96.7 and Mr. Rod Stewart. Ah, uh, so fun to do radio by the beach and talk about cool places that you're going to be at that were right on the beach. Uh, and now it costs too much to live that close to the beach. Unless you inherit your house. But then your house is probably falling apart because ocean spray and salt air corrodes, corrodes, corrodes. But if you are living in such climes and locales, I hope you're having a wonderful time. And thank you for listening to today's podcast. Maybe you would like to chime in and tell me about your adventures in the beach area that you live or the inland area that you live or wherever you live and your fun times listening to the radio, you can call me 510-228-4640. That's 510-228-4640. And more ways to reach me now. Here's A-Frame to tell you. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.